Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, January the 11th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shaw or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep the conversation going by supporting the show. You can share it online with your friends and your family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, where you get your podcasting content from. If you don't, it will hurt our feelings. It's going to really hurt my feelings. It's going to so, destroy me. And just I, know that. Walk in that truth. I'm in a vulnerable, emotional state right now, so really, you can can't have that on your conscience. Uh, <laughs> we're going to leave some links in the description so you can do just that. We're going to leave, make it easy for you to leave those good reviews. Verse of the day is coming to you from James chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So the entirety of the word of God is beautiful and it is useful for us and it gives us what we need. But I feel like every time there is a Chapter three, verse sixteen in <laughs> it's, scripture, it's it just bombs. always hits. It, uh, <laughs> like, that, that's never going to land in a. And he took a he took his flock out in the right field. Now, no. It's always going to be it's like, never like narrative. punch right in the theology. Something about those three sixteens, man. I don't know what it is, and I, this is bombs. not. I haven't checked every single one, so maybe I'm just speaking out of ignorance here. But every time I've come across a three sixteen, it's been yeah. like, whoo, yeah. that's a good one. Every for where envy and self seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. If we are pursuing doing our own wants, our own desires, our own mind, our own goals above what God has set for us, we're going to end up in confusion. If you are out there and you are listening, you're in 2024 already and you're like, man, I feel like we're just two weeks in and my life is already like going off the rails. I was watching a video the other day and someone said, it's weird, like two days into 2024, I'm, I'm already done. And you know why <laughs> that is for most people? Because you're pursuing your goals. That's right above God's goals for you. Yeah, you're just bringing that from 2023, 2022. You're bringing all those goals with you. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. I mean, we've we've all been there, but pursue God first and what he has for your life and he will give you the desires of your heart, even if sometimes those desires of your heart change to match God's heart. Dr. Shaw's preaching a series right now and the very first one he preached, he talked about that, this unchecked desire. Yeah. Anywhere there's envy and self-seeking, you, you know there's desire, like corrupt desire, unchecked desire desire mm -hmm. at the center of it. And desire is not a bad thing, but when you don't check your desires and when you just let them run rampant and you let them drive your actions, then yeah, of course you're going to have every evil thing. Of yeah. course you're going to have strife and, and envy and all these uh, all these things. Um, you know, one of the things that that I've been trying to do is, is uh, get up earlier, but it's really difficult, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm trying to find new and creative ways to do that. And I think, because I think that's a good desire to have. Yeah. Um, but I hate it. Yeah, it's not fun. I hate it. It's not. It's like a training process. It's and not, it's I not feel good. like it's a godly desire. I want to. I want to rise up early in the morning, and yet I'm filled with misery and with woe. Until, until now. Mm -hmm. And I need you guys to prepare for this. My wife found these alarm clocks, and David, I know you've been. You've you've got this alarm clock at your house too. And I, I and Ryan, I'm going to encourage you to get it. It does not wake you up with sound. No, no, mon ami. It wakes you up with light. Really? The alarm clock gets brighter and brighter over a period of time. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Oh, okay. I'm intrigued by this. Set my alarm for 530, right? Sure. I want to get up at 530. Right. Starting at 5, that little alarm clock's going to bloop, just a little thing of light. And from the next 30 minutes, it's going to just in gradually increase in brightness until the room is lit in a sunshiny glow. Now, my wife's furious. Oh, well. She's mad. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't she the one who found the alarm clock? Yeah. Yeah. She wanted me to use it for... It also has sounds. She wanted me to use it for that. The The light is a feature. Sure. The light is just a feature. But she <clears throat> mislikes that. She does not like having blinding light in her face. No. See, it's also over... But it's at the front of the room, so I have to get up to go cut it off. So that's by the also... Time, yeah, that's a good strategy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know you've been using them, Dave. Yeah. You it's, like it? It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. Clever. It's yeah. Well done. I have mine in the same, like I have it set across the room. Mm -hmm. So I have to get out of bed. So this morning went off. Well, it didn't really go off. It's just like light. It lit up. And, and yeah, gradually <laughs> increased. I woke up and I was like, huh. So I got out of bed, turned the alarm clock off. Got back in bed. I wonder if I can play uh, the well, sound from here. You wait, you got back in the bed? <laughs> that, that may not be the intended purchase or the intended feature. Can I? 
Oh, uh, I can't do it. I bet you my alarm clock at home is going off. Right You're now. just waking up <laughs> all the babies. <laughs> so it plays like this meditative flute. It's like it's like this pad. It's like hum, and this flute goes. Oh, no, I would I would not like all of that in the morning. That is going to be a no for me in the morning. No, none of that. Mm-mm. It's still going. Cut the alarm off. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh yeah, Ellie's like, get up, <laughs> get up and turn it off. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's got like like hours later at like seven or eight when she has to get up. She's got. Ah, 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 ah. Oh gosh, <laughs> I would throw that phone in. A yeah, I don't like that at all. Absolutely, at not. all. But that's my that's my alarm clock journey right now. That's my early morning journey. I'm intrigued as the as to the light. Yeah, clock, it works. The light alarm. I, I, I'm gonna look into that. You could just open up a window, but Ellie doesn't like that either. She don't want. She's she's afraid that people will somehow come up to the window like. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excuse me, neighbor. <laughs> Borrow a cup of sugar. Could I have any cookies? <laughs> uh, I'm interested to know what uh, what Doctor Shaw's alarm situation is. I because he wakes up early often. Yeah, he's he's usually up pretty early, but I feel like he's a plain. He's he's a he's a straightforward guy. He. <laughs> he might have one of those old Mima alarm clock, like, like the actual clock yeah. that, that has the little two bells. Yeah. Oh man, I couldn't stand those things. Who does that to themselves? Just wake. I up mean, like that, that when that was your only option, that just scare yourself was. awake. Ugh, I hate that. Well, you just talked about Ellie's alarm. Yeah. Who does that? I hate that. Who does? I that? hate it so much. I want to be gently woken up. Yeah. Instead of like that's what startled I mean. she, awake. She doesn't think that because she's like, I'm just not getting up. Forget that. Why set the alarm? She wants to wake up angry. I think that just comes. That's a whole nother discussion. That just comes installed in every mom. I think they just want to. I just want to wake up angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna ask Doctor Shaw about his alarm clock situation, but right in, let us know what you guys have going on. What's your wake up routine? How do you wake yourself up in the morning? Uh, two five two five eight two five zero two eight. Or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey there, listeners. I'm John Galantis. And I'm Ellie Galantis. And we just want to take a quick second and talk to you about Dr. Shaw's and Nicole's book, 30 Days to a New Beginning, Daily Devotions to Help You Move Forward. You know, this is actually the second book in the 30 Days series. And the whole point of this devotional is to help us get unstuck from the ruts of life. You know, when it comes to running the race of life, it matters how you start, but a bad start doesn't ultimately determine how you finish the race. You can have a good finish, even with a bad start, and that's where this book comes in. No matter who you are or where you are in life, you're going to get stuck. Instead of going out and buying some gadget or some planner, like I know I've done several times. I know that's right. 30 Days encourages you to find your fresh start in God's Word. Life doesn't have a reset button, but our God is a God who does new things. His mercies are new every day, which means every day is a new chance for you to start over. You can grab 30 Days to a New Beginning on Amazon.com. We're going to leave a link in the description box below, and if you already have the book, let us know what you think about it. That's right. Send us a text, 252-582-5028. Share what God has done in your life through this devotional. Hey, maybe we'll even read your story on the air. Ellie, you ready to get back to the show? Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. Oh, me. Goodness me. I'm so sorry. We are here. <laughs> Clearview today's studio, bright and early of them. I was trying morning. to figure out what kind of Chewbacca <laughs> Wookie sounds were coming from over there. Me, wake <laughs> up! Yeah, sorry about that. I we talking about our alarms this morning. I didn't get a lot of sleep, dude. but we are here today in the Clearview today studio with Dr. Abaddon Shah, who is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author. Full time pastor, host of today's show, Doctor Shaw. We're talking about alarm clocks. How we yes. get up of a morning. How we right. can discipline ourselves to get up. In the yes, morning. and I yeah. gotta know: Are you a gentle alarmer, or are you like the klaxon, like ah ah ah? Uh, the first one that I have. This is how it goes off. Okay, not bad. Right. Yeah, kind of and then I have a f- one five minutes later, and it goes off like this. That one. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's the bane of my existence because that's Ellie's. <laughs> And what she does is she'll set 20. She's like, all right, I'm going to set oh. one for 640, 643, 647. I'm like, why do you do that? Then she she won't cancel them. She'll snooze them. 
So now each one is incremented by nine minutes. So it gets to a point where they're compounding. And instead of 20 alarms, there's like 68. And she can't <laughs> stop one. She can't time it right to stop one. She's trying to wake herself up is what Bro, she's trying to do. It's off. That's Wow. Why? Why is that the way? Because we dislike ourselves. We dislike we, ourselves. We I want to be angry in the morning. I want to make Nothing this a says good yeah. morning like fury. I actually tried. You want to tell Dr. Shaw what you were telling us? Because uh, I actually did invest in that, and it's helping me a great deal. She does not like it. So I have an alarm, uh, Dr. Shaw, where what I do is I set the alarm at night, and you know, obviously just whatever time I want to get up. And the way it starts is... If I set the alarm for 5.30 in the morning, it'll start at 5.15, like, with a really dim light. Oh. And it'll just, like, brighten the light until at 5.30 it's full bright, full wow. brightness. So the room is lit up. If you did that with Nicole, do you think she would like it or was she not She like will it? not like it. <laughs> She's trying to... she is... Now, now, here's the thing. She gets up before I do. Really? Other than uh, on our... Um, men's morning prayer time right. which is at six o'clock right, and i get up at five and i usually shave uh-huh. and so that way you know i want to look fresh and right. look like i am really um caring about this prayer time i mm-hmm. tell the guys just come as you are mm-hmm. but personally i shave and i look nice right so i get up at five that's the only day that she gets up um after me if mm. you if you were to get up at five by way of a, just a bright light in the room no 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 she's not going she's not, that. Do that. She's not having <laughs> she that she does not go that she already has the covers like as close over her ear <laughs> over her nose <laughs> is she a bundler like just lots and lots and lots of covers? oh yeah that's because uh usually in the middle of the night i'm left with a little handkerchief <laughs> <laughs> just like this a little, tiny little triangle of covers just yeah like a little uh, homeless kid cover up. <laughs> on the streets of bombay is what i feel like i'm like <laughs> let me have some please <laughs> snow winds like roaring through the bedroom over there just, just like one of those universal marriage things man just all Always fighting for covers, yeah, and, and all, I feel like always fighting the alarms too. Like, cause you, yep. it, no, no marriage has two people that are on the same page alarm wise. No, they always are different, no. or cover wise, or it, cover wise. It may exist somewhere out there, and if you're in a marriage where you're on the exact same page alarm wise, quit write in and let stop lying to yourself. <laughs> uh, write in and let us know, I guess. But I would imagine that most people, it, it's like opposites attract there, yeah, or, or just differences attract. It's I like think. God knows that y'all are on this insane journey called life, and He's gonna give you exactly the right partner that you need, but definitely not the one that I would have like, like, cause I would choose like. Like, oh, here's all my qualities. The, this woman just has to match that. Yeah. yeah. God's like, nah, not going to happen. Yeah. No, God knows what company we need to keep. He knows, right. he knows who he needs to bring into our lives in the in the terms of spouses. But today we're talking about, you know, the company you keep in general. Who do you surround yourself with? What does your life look like? Um, you told me this one time, Dr. Shaw, and this has impacted me tremendously. And I've shared this with our students on multiple occasions. You become like the people you associate with. Yes. Specifically yes, yes. the five people who are closest to you. Oh, man. If yes. you take inventory of those relationships, you've got a pretty good idea of the trajectory of your life. Um, one of my favorite authors, David McCullough, wrote a book called Brave Companions. Mm. And it's about people who together went places and did things. For example, you have Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Mm. Or, um, but I don't know if uh, McCullough talks about Edmund Hel- uh, Hillary and Tensing Norgay. But these are people who bonded together and they accomplished some, some great uh, feats. Mm-hmm. Life is not about the quantity, mm-hmm. and it's not even about the quality. It's not about how long you live or what kind of a life you live. It's like it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. I believe it's about the company we keep. Mm. It's about the companion we have in the journey of life. And I hope you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. When you're walking with God, it's not about the quantity or the quality. It's the company we keep. That's right. It's mm-hmm. the relationship we have with God. And if God is your companion in life's journey, you may have some tough challenges, but he promises to walk with us, to lead us home. And mm-hmm. it's encouraging because I feel like we take for granted that God is always there. Mm. So it's almost like he's not there. Like he's there, but I don't count that because he's always there. That's right. true. Yeah, you just kind of disregard it. It becomes almost like a white noise type situation. If it's always there, you're just like, yeah, well. It was know. like that. It was like um, when someone, I, I heard, I can't remember who it was. I think it was like 10th Avenue North or something. They did like a devotional where this teenage couple got caught 
doing something they shouldn't have been doing and the principal or whatever or the pastor was like you know someone saw you and they got nervous they were like oh who saw us and they were like god saw you and mm. there was just relief they were like yeah. oh, oh thank, thank goodness, goodness. Yeah. but it's that kind of thing yeah. where we forget that god is our constant companion he's right. always with us yeah. yeah the key is to look to him to talk to him that's that's the essence of the christian life is your relationship with jesus christ mm-hmm. now in the bible there's one man who is expressly described as walking with God. And I hope you know who I'm talking about. Mm. Enoch. Mm -hmm. In Genesis 5.23, it says, So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Compared to some of the other people, he did not live a long life. But what is said about him in verse 24 is that Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Mm. Definitely a... A deep verse there, and I think people yeah. gravitate towards that because it's so it's unusual, it's so unusual, and yeah. we don't really see that repeated. Right. Yeah. The word there for walked in Hebrew is halak, uh, which the idea is more than just movement. It has the idea of relationship and fellowship. Mm. So it's not just walking like together. They're walking by the beach or going up a mountain. It's about a life lived together. So kind of in the same way that we would refer to someone's walk with God. Yeah. Or kind of that's like, right. like that's right. Kind of like how Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden. That's kind right. Of the same thing. Yeah. And so when we think about Adam and Eve, it's more than just God came in the cool of the day and they walked together. I think many times they may have just sat together, mm. but they were still walking together in their relationship. Right. And then of course, um, in time sin came in and they stopped walking with God and they began to hide from God. And then, of course, as you know, more sin came in where brother killed brother and mm-hmm. and his curse was to be a wanderer and fugitive. In fact, uh, Cain even says uh, something to the effect of, now everybody who knows me is going to try to kill me, mm-hmm. so I have to run. And God said, no, I'm going to put a mark on you. Uh, and all that was because he was no longer going to be in the presence of God. So that walking is that relationship, that presence. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when he isolated himself from God, it was like, well, he's like, everybody else is going to be against me too. It's like he's isolating himself from the rest of the world. Right, right. Very, 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 very sad. Um, And so when we think about all this, we need to really ask ourselves that question, what does that mean to walk with God? Mm -hmm. I believe walking with God begins with the saving knowledge of Christ. Mm. Amen. It says in Jude 14, I said Jude 14 because there there are no chapters. There's only one. Mm -hmm. It says, now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also saying, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints. The Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints. What does that mean? It means that Enoch understood the gospel. Mm. In fact, he understood the gospel so well that he saw the second coming of Christ. Hmm. Oh, wow. Are these, this is the the, the 10,000 or his his angels. Mm -hmm. Right. So his saints. His saints. His saints. So So, that's people? mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. People, godly people who died in Christ, whether pre-Christ or post-Christ, they're coming with Christ at his second coming. And Enoch sees that. Wow. Prophetically, he sees that. And maybe he had a conversation with Adam and Eve. I don't know how he got saved. Maybe it was through the death of righteous Abel. Uh, Maybe he had a conversation with Seth. We don't know for sure where that happened, but somehow uh, he came to know God. I'm glad you point that out because, you know, we we think about these people in sort of like a generational succession. So like at the end of Adam's life, we have Seth's life. And at the end of Seth's life, right. But that's not true. There was lots of years of overlap because they were living hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes. So yes. it's it's very possible that Enoch interacted with Adam. Yeah. Yeah. And Enoch had a relationship with Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ. Mm-hmm. That's how he knew that this Christ is going to come one day and give his life for me, but he is coming back in a different sort of way yeah. with 10,000 of his saints. And there's a passage in Amos 3, 7 that says, surely the Lord God does nothing Unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Mm, Wow. For Enoch to know this means he was God's servant. Yeah. Mm. He was God's man. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that we we just, 
we don't think about because he's he's kind of wedged in there between like the main characters. Yeah, like well, uh, and we get such a brief glimpse at his life, just just sort of like a just a, a quick mention. That's something that you and I have been kind of talking about, Doctor Shaw, especially in like the Book of Judges. Like these are characters who who really have very very deep, especially you can see it in Enoch, very very deep theological and doctrinal implications mm. and yet not much is there so you really have to care enough about it to dive in and look mm-hmm. at who this yeah. man actually that's right. was that's right he lived in good times and bad mm. now how do we know that well just like that novel said this was the best of time and the worst of times mm. uh, best because just think about who all was still around we just talked about you know how these people lived hundreds of years and in Genesis 4.25, it says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son named Seth. Why did she name him Seth? For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. The name Eve gave to Seth is significant because it means appointed. In turn, Seth also had a son. He called him Enosh, which means weak or frail. Mm. I mean, who would name a child weak? Yeah. Mm. Uh, because then it says in verse 26, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. There's a significance to that. Do you think they're recognizing their own weakness in a way? That's it. Mm. They're, That's they're, it. they're starting to see the effects of sin compounded over generations. Yeah. As intelligent, strong, and emotionally aware these pre-flood people were, they knew this much, not all of them maybe, they knew this much that um, they needed God. Mm. Wow. They needed God. And so they began to call upon the name of the Lord. It, it was a cry for, in our terms, revival. Mm. But it was also the worst of times. Why do we say that? Because it was a wicked generation. Again, Jude, verse 14 says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. How many times is that ungodly mentioned? <laughs> Three or four. I've been. Yeah, I was Wait, of. there's more. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. It's almost like Jude's trying to make a point. Yeah, here. I'm starting to yeah. think ungodly is key here. <laughs> yeah. So it was a best of times in the sense people were calling upon God. But it was also the worst of times because they were doing ungodly, 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 ungodly things and living mm-hmm. ungodly lives. This is all leading up to Noah's flood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So sometimes we think, oh, it's the best of times. Times are great. People are going to walk with God. Enoch did. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we hear, well, it's the worst of times. You know, nowadays people don't go to church and they don't want to read the Bible and they don't want to hear the word and they don't want to worship God. They don't want to share the gospel. Worst of times. Enoch walked with God. Yeah. 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 We can't We can't just put the blame on yeah. our, our surroundings or our culture. Yeah. You know, and it's easy to do that because you can look at, especially our culture in America and say, well, we're too far gone. Right. No, yeah. no need to. There's no hope. There's why even why even bother at this yeah. point. But Enoch reminds us, you yeah. know, in, in the best of times and in the worst of times, your relationship with God is critical. Yeah. It's paramount. So we have to dig, just like John just said, you know, we have to dig to find more about him. So one, one thing we know that he knew Christ because he's talking about the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints, mm-hmm. talking about the second coming. Uh, we also dig and we can see that he was living in the best and the worst of times, mm-hmm. spiritually speaking. But then also we see that he was not just some hermit mm-hmm. or some monk living out in some cave somewhere or out in the yeah. wilderness. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. I think people would kind of make that assumption that, well, it's difficult to connect to someone like Enoch because he's like one of the first humans to ever live. Right. Yeah. He's not, not, some, not some Not some sage living in a cave right right uh, separated from society renounce everything and you know he was he had a family yeah right. he was a he was a husband and a father yeah it says in genesis 5 22 after he begot methuselah enoch walked with god 300 years that's a long time by the way have yeah. you thought about that 300 years he stayed faithful to god for 300 years 2024 right yeah 300 years back is what uh, 1800s no no further no than that. that's 200 so 17. 1924 would be 100. 
1824 would be 200. 1724 would be 300. That's that's oh, we're pre, not even that's yeah, pre-America, pre-America as a nation. Pre-America as a nation. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, they're just young men at this point. Most yeah. of us won't even walk with God completely for the rest of this month. Yeah. But he walked with <laughs> he walked with God faithfully for well, 300 years. That's a funny years. yet sobering thought. Yeah. <laughs> but the key is that he had sons and daughters. Yeah. So he was living the life we all have to live, sons and daughters. There may be disappointments, there may be hurt feelings, there may be misunderstandings. The same things, guys and ladies, that we all go through family life and relationship struggles, I'm sure this man went through them. Mm-hmm. And yet he walked with God. Wow. It's it's a, it's an encouraging thought because it's like, yeah, it's funny because we're saying, okay, well, yeah, I'm not even going to make it to the end of January. But... If the but Enoch was a person, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. He wasn't like some superhuman, divine being. He was a person. Yeah. Now, yeah, he lived a long time, but that's even more the encouragement for us. Yeah, like, he can do that. He's not a mythological character. Right. He's not, you know, some idealized man. Mm-hmm. He's he was he was a guy. He, yeah, he, a he was a family flat. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but he but he maintained his relationship with God. That's right. Yeah. And set that example for his family. Yeah. And then finally, one thing we find out when we dig about him is in the book of Hebrews, chapter eleven, verse five, it says, By a faith. Faith. Mm-hmm. By faith. Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. By faith. All we typically read is that he was not because God took him, but by faith. Mm-hmm is he was taken away. Mm-hmm. And he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Mm. Wow. See, I think I think because that's such a unique thing that like he just didn't die, God took him, we fixate on that as this big, great mystery. And yet Paul puts the answer out right there. It's by yeah. faith that God took him. And we tend to gloss right over that. Yeah. yeah. We forget that Enoch is even in the hall of isn't that, wasn't that the hall of faith mm-hmm. that was yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the key is verse 6 because we quote this verse a lot. At least I do. And the verse is this, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm-hmm. That verse was personified in the life of Enoch. Wow. Mm. God was pleased with him because of his faith. It's like this. If I were to say, John's a great guy, wonderful guy, man, one of the best people you'll ever meet. You just can't trust him. Hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> well like, what about all those good things? It's like, yeah, they're, they're true. Yeah, they're true. They're true. I just can't all trust that's true. Him. Isn't that what people do with God? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a great God. He's a powerful God. He's a wonderful, loving God. Do you trust him that he can take care of you in this life and the life to come? I, I can take mean, maybe the life to come. Yeah. Yes, can you trust him in this life? No, we won't say it, but that's how we live. Yeah. Well, I'm trying. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if I were to say that to Ryan. If Ryan were to ask me, "Do you trust me?" I'm trying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you actually are trustworthy. If like you have, if you know that you're, you yeah. haven't done anything to betray it. It's like, why? Yeah. That why? Hurts. What did I do? Yeah. I, I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. You know, when I go through life, it's hard to trust you. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, it's like we're in a weird position because like, no, well, now I feel like you, you're going through something. Maybe I should sympathize with you. But, <laughs> but don't we treat God that way? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah definitely. It, I, and you hear it oftentimes of like, yeah, that, those spiritual things are good, but I live in the real world. Yeah. And, and you know, I, my concerns are with the practice. Sometimes it's hard, brother, to yeah. trust yeah. God. You know, it's the, hard. I understand it's hard. You know, the Lord Try helps. saying that to somebody around you. Oh, uh. yeah. The Lord helps those who help themselves. I mean, he's, he's not going to do it for you. He's yeah. Gonna, He's going he wants you to do it. Like Yeah. Okay. Oof. Yeah. Go, go great, for it. Great great God. It's just sometimes it's tough. And yeah. but Enoch, on the other hand, trusted God and it pleased God. Mm-hmm. Pleased him so much that God said, I'm not gonna make you go through the chilly waters of death. Here, come. Yeah. I'm gonna help you cross over. Come what a up. reward. Yeah. Yeah. Just what cross over and you're done. And it was, it was times were tough. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think I think that helps me to to kind of see that because again, I've I've always viewed it as this great mystery. Why would he do that? Could it be as simple as that? Like he just wanted to reward him for his faith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want you to have here, to die. And I'm going to put your name in the book of uh, uh, my book, the Bible, mm-hmm. and you'll be remembered forever. And then you get to enjoy eternity as 
my, my child. Yeah. And it's like the wise sage Cutlass once said, that's what faith can do. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about that in years. That bald head just Golly, popped right in front of my face. <laughs> man. <laughs> Shout out to Cutlass if you're listening to the radio show right now. I know you know. are. I know you are. <laughs> man, what, man, may that be said of us. That's like right. the, the summation of Enoch's life, it, right there in verse five, he pleased God. Mm. He pleased God and God rewarded his faith. May that be said of us as as men, as a radio show, uh, as you, or for you individuals out there and involved in ministry or those of you out there who are just trying to live the Christian life. May it be said of us that we pleased God mm-hmm. and that we remained faithful Amen. in our in our relationship with him. Amen. I pray that today was uh, helpful for you guys. Maybe it would clarify some things in your walk with God. Maybe it helped you to take a critical look at where you are in your relationship with him. Write in and let us know what today's episode meant for you, 252-582-5028. You can, of course, visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Make sure you partner with us financially on that website as well. Scroll to the bottom. Be faithful in your giving, and God will reward you as a result. And uh, make sure you go over and visit mightymuscadine.com. Check out their list of products there and use the promo code TODAY. That's T-O-D-A-Y. And a portion of those proceeds will come right back here to the Clearview Today Show. John. You know what I'm going to ask you. What's it? What's it, man? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. What's coming up on tomorrow's episode? Dr. Shaw's Book Club Ayo. for January. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to wait. I'll I almost know. reveal the title. I know y'all got some resolutions about reading more books in 2024. Here's one coming you up You definitely want to want to read this one. I, I'm going to give you just a little hint. You definitely want to read this one if you're part of a team. And that's all I'm going to say. Ooh. Tune in for tomorrow's episode, man. Love it. Got to. We love you guys. See you tomorrow on Clear Read Today.